Today in this video I'm going to be showing you how I painted my Blood Angel Space Ring chapter and how I started from this and got to this point. Now without further ado, let's begin. Now the first thing you need to do is prepare and in this case I have my dry palette, I have my wet palette, my camera's running, and water. Okay, now that we are about to get into the actual painting portion, let me first talk about the brushes I'm going to be using. Now I have two brushes, uh, the one of the brushes I'm going to be using is a detailed brush. It's meant for primarily detailing, it's synthetic, if it's synthetic or natural, it doesn't really matter. And the other brush I'm using is a hook tip brush for it to get in the places that I can't necessarily reach. Now, the first step we are going to be doing with our Blood Angel is we are going to be basing him. And we already have him based red, and now we just need to base him in Abaddon Black. Now, the actual step of basing is very simple. It's very rudimentary. We are just going to be blotting out the primary other color on him which is Blood Angel is black. So we're doing the Aquila on the chest, the joints, and the uh, chapter marking on the shoulder, and the bolt gun. All right, now we can start putting our Abaddon black into the wet palette, and we can actually start painting. Now, to actually use a wet palette, I highly recommend. Uh, when you use a dry palette for base painting, it, it tends to be very difficult because your paint will constantly dry up on you and you have to reapply more and then thin it out again. Well, a wet palette, as you can see, you can just put it in and the, the actual wetness of the palette can, will keep it from drying out on you. Now here I just add a bit more water to thin it down, make it more usable, and you should get it to a scarlet smooth, kind of a silky way, like this and you should be ready to paint. And now we are actually going to move on. I'm going to show you how to base a marine. And right here, we're just going to start with the Aquila and we're just going to do a nice simple little strokes. Don't rush it, just, just keep going. Don't worry about it, just smooth strokes. There we go. Nice little strokes. And right here, I actually nick the collar, but something important is don't worry about messing up in the basing stage and especially in the basing stage because of how like the nature of basing a miniature is if you make a mistake and you like nick the collar you can go back later I can go back later with like the red or something like that and just fix the problem that I ended up making yeah like see you can even see how I nicked it a little bit but that's fine because later I'll, I'll go back later afterwards in between cuts and just make it right again there you go, just finishing the chest, grabbing uh, more paint if you need to. Just uncomplicate, just get separate out that Aquila on the chest from everything else. There we go. Very simple step. So now that we have painted the Aquila on the chest, we are going to be doing the bolt gun and other black details. So now that we finished basing our Abaddon black on the model, we can see just how much it brought out the separation here. And you can see I've painted the quill on the chest, uh, the studs on the right shoulder pad, the joints on his legs, and the straps on his back, as well as the trim on the shoulder, and the chapter marking, and the bolt gun. Now, I did go back also and fix other small details. So now we're going to take Balthazar Gold, and we are going to be painting the uh, end of the barrel in this bronzy type of used color. See right here. Now we're just going to do that. And after doing that, we're going to take Rhinox Hide and we're going to be painting the scabbard. 
Now you can use Mornfang Brown for this, which is another dark paint, but I, rec I recommend Rhinox Hide for that more leather used type look. So now we've got the Rhinox Hide on the brush, put it in a wet palette, get a little bit of water on there just to thin it down more. And we can start to actually base the scabbard. Now I'm going to be just doing the middle section here of the scabbard because the top and the bottom we're going to be painting silver later as well as a bunch of other details. And with uh, a wet palette it will come out rather thin, the paint, so you will have to do multiple coats. So right here I'm probably going to have to do like three, maybe two coats of the scabbard to get a nice opaque layer. But yeah, once you have this done we can move on to the next color. And something actually very important to note with metallic paints in particular is that you do not want to use a wet palette with them. Don't use a wet palette. You want to use a dry palette because the pigment adheres better on a dry palette. And with the metallic paint we're actually going to be painting the, some of the details on the bolt gun, the tip and bottom of the scabbard, the knife, and the power pack and other small details. So let's get to that. So we're actually going to be using uh, a little bit of Retributor Armor for a small detail on the bolt gun. Yeah, so the skull on the side of the bolt gun with wings is we're going to be painting that in Retributor Armor. So now we can see all the detail that we picked out with the silver yes, uh, yesterday, and we, we did the knife tubes on his helmet, the back of the bolt gun, uh, vents on the power pack, the scabbard, and the little gold detail on the bolt gun. And now we can move on to putting shade on the armor. Now this will add more depth than just simple basic. If I can get this thing open. So we take our shade and we actually put the use the shade on a dry palette. And with the shade, we are just going to be going into the recesses and corners of the armor. So a little bit on the vents on the face, which you can barely see. I don't put that off actually. And you generally want to do it in like parts you'd expect to have shade on it. So right here. I'm doing it in near the ab section, and I'm going to be doing it on the pectoral parts on the side right here. Now with shade, you can use Agrax or shade or Null Oil. I just have Agrax with me, so I'll be using that. And you want to get in all the vents, all the parts that you think would be darker, and of course have shade in it. See so right here, like on the thigh panel, just do it along the edge, and since it's a shade, which is basically just a wash, you can be quite generous with how you uh, put it on. Do it along there. Just uh, all the place, all the deep recesses. Alright, now that we have the shade done, you can see just how much more it makes the model pop. Like all the little all the little details are brought to life. It makes it it makes it feel um uh real in a way. So now that we got the shade out of the way, we can move on to highlighting. Now we're gonna be highlighting the Wild Rider Red and Evil Sun Scarlet, starting with Evil Sun Scarlet. Put it on the wet palette. Have it to a nice thin layer, get some water, get it to that scarlet smooth viscosity like I said earlier. And now with edge highlighting, as because we're edge highlighting in two colors with Evil Sun Scarlet, we're actually just going to be painting the flat parts of the model. All the parts you'd expect to be hit by the sun. So the whole collar, the whole top of the collar, we're gonna be painting in Evil Sun Scarlet. In generally parts you expect 
the sun to hit. So here I'm doing it on the corner of the uh, breastplate and little edges in other parts. Very rudimentary step, very simple. And on the top part of the knee guard as well. So now we can move on to the harder edge highlighting a bit. Now we're done with Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to be using Wild Rider Red. And with this step in particular, edge highlighting is going to be very important. Now before how we just did the flat parts of our collar, we're going to be using the very edge of the collar. So you'll see right here, I'm using the side of the brush, just the very, very edge of it. On the helmet too, very edge. Now you can mess this up, and if you mess up, don't worry, you just gotta start from basically basing. So your main color, your slightly lighter edge highlight shade, and then your brightest shade. And your brightest shade should always be reserved for the edge highlights. It's a very time consuming step, but it gets some good results. Just be patient. So, after all of our edge highlighting, you can really see how much it makes the model pop. I, I do not recommend doing this for all your models, because you will drive yourself insane. But if you follow this guide, you should end up with something very similar to what I have done. Just don't expect perfect results, because I've been doing this for a couple years now. And here's the model in better lighting, and this is when I've done more details. So, like, the I did the eye lenses green, and did the little laurel on the shoulder in white and other details. Just make sure you don't do this with every model, because you will drive yourself insane when painting an army. And now, your Blood Angel is finished. Unless...